Hey guys, let's discuss current affairs. Uh, here's the first question in today's set. For which industry has the central government recently approved the production link incentive scheme, PLA scheme, with the budgetary outlay of a little over 26,000 crore? That would be all of them. So auto, auto components and drone industries. I would give you some notes on this. Please write. Okay. Uh, let's start with the PLI for auto, auto components and drone industries. That should be the title. Underline that first one. Incentives of 26,058 crores. That's the number you see on the screen there. 26,058 crores will be provided over five years, over five years. The scheme is aimed at, aimed at, aimed at incentivizing, incentivizing, you can write an S also. Incentivizing advanced automotive, advanced automotive technologies, global supply chain in India, global supply chain in India. So this incentivizing advanced automotive technologies global supply chain in India. So the idea is whatever companies are there, they need to be incentivized and what's not there, they need to be, you know, you know, encouraged to come to India to set up production facilities. What will it lead to? Please write. This would create, this would create an additional employment of, or this would create employment of 7.6 lakh jobs 7.6 lakh 7.6 lakh jobs full stop next next one scheme for auto sector scheme for auto sector scheme for auto sector will bring fresh investments will bring will bring fresh investments of rupees 42,500 crores 42,500 crores let me repeat scheme for auto sector will bring fresh investments of 42,500 crore and incremental production of incremental production of Rupee, rupees 2.3 lakh crore rupees 2.3 lakh crore so companies are expected to bring in this kind of investment a little over 42,000 crore but you know once they invest they will produce stuff like car automobiles and all that auto components and all that would lead to production to the tune of 2.3 lakh crore that would be the additional GDP you can this is how you look at it okay and to produce this you would need people and this is where you create employment and when you have people having jobs uh, they have purchasing power which would mean they would have they would they, they, the demand for goods and services also would increase this would lead to acceleration of overall economic output next last point scheme for drone sector d-r-o-n-e drone scheme for drone sector will bring fresh investments of Rupees 5000 crore and incremental production of incremental production of 1500 crore 1500 crore so this is something that is being looked at in a, and of the 7.6 lakh jobs 10,000 are likely to be created in the do, drone you know sector while the rest would come from the automobile and auto components sectors 
So this is a PLI scheme. So the government of India is now pushing a lot of reforms through different ways, you know, in different methods. They call them PLIs. They call them, you know, uh, uh, what we say, uh, national monetization uh, scheme and all. I mean, whatever it is, they are pushing a lot of reforms through this. One major reform that government has not been able to push through is disinvestment. Uh, while the target is 2.1 lakh crore, we barely have achieved anything this year. So hopefully in the next, um, uh, at least hopefully the government, uh, in the next, um, I mean, in the remaining months of this financial year, things may work for them. Things hopefully work for them. You know? The government is squeezed for money. There is no money, guys. Absolutely no money. The center has recently, see, um, just to give you an idea how these schemes work, how good these schemes are. If you look at, uh, we, we, you know, there was this PLI scheme for the mobile sector, you know, um, mobile sector and all. So the, you know, Apple came to India. Now, earlier we had to import Apple. Apple phone, iPhones were imported and they used to cost a lot of money. They still cost a lot of money. But importantly, 71% of all the iPhones sold in India are made in India. Think about the taxes earned by the government. Plus, the cost of production also has gone down. Consequently, see, this is one thing that the difference could be passed on to the consumer or it could be taken by the, eaten by the consumer, by the company as profit. But more or less, you know, the amount of money that is being earned by the government through taxes, both GST as well as, you know, you know, what to say, uh, you know, sales tax, I mean, uh, uh, what to say, income tax, like, because people get employed, when people get employed, they have, you know, they, they, they earn incomes, when they earn incomes, they pay tax on it. And when they have income, they also create demand for other goods. So you buy a biscuit packet, you go to a cinema, you end up paying GST and all that. So it's a win-win for everyone. People involved who get jobs, direct, indirect employment, plus the government, you know, it not only earns taxes, it also, you know, creates a goodwill for itself that it has created jobs, you know. The center has recently constituted a group of ministers chaired by Rajnath Singh for better implementation of various welfare schemes for men, for scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, other backward classes, minorities and women. Okay. So Rajnath Singh is the defense minister, defense minister of India. You could write Rajnath Singh, defense minister of India. Defense minister. You know this anyway. Defense minister. Smriti Irani, women and child development. Women and Child Development. Women and Child Development. Piyush Goel holds three ministries. Okay. One would be Commerce and Industry. Commerce and Industry. Okay. That's one. Two is um, Textiles. This is a ministry that was earlier held by Smriti Irani. You know, number three is um, food uh, what is it um, consumer affairs sorry the name of the minister goes like the consumer affairs food and public distribution this is how it is consumer affairs food and public distribution okay so those are three ministries crucial ministries are being handled by Pish Goel Narayan Taturane um, he heads the Ministry of MSME, Ministry of MSME, you know, micro, small and medium enterprises. And um, you look at Dharmendra Pradhan, he holds two major ministries. One is education, Ministry of Education. Okay. The second is called Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship so skill development and entrepreneurship okay guys okay now uh, how do you know a particular community scheduled caste or scheduled tribe well see 
many people think it's about income or birth or anything it's a little different from that i'll give you a simple understanding in the schedule one of the constitution of india there is a list of tribes and castes there's also a list of the names of 28 states and um, eight union territories okay similarly there is a list of castes and tribes and schedule order one says that if the name of a caste appears in that list that caste is called scheduled caste if a name if the name of a tribe appears in that list is a scheduled tribe so if my caste name look i have no personal interest in this okay if i i belong to a particular caste and the name of my caste appears in that list my caste becomes a scheduled caste if i belong to a particular tribe and the name of my tribe belong appears in that list of tribes in scheduled uh, uh, one sh scheduled one then my tribe is known as scheduled tribe historically these have been backward communities um, at the receiving end, end of the social strata I mean, the way the social structure was in the past uh, still is uh, you know they have been at the receiving end obc other backward classes it's not caste or not other backward caste it is other backward classes and this is see while sc and st is by birth obc is by income because the government of india has clearly stated that communities that have been identified as backward classes not everyone gets to avail the benefit of reservation okay only communities that belong to you know that have an income of below certain amount threshold amount will be considered for reservation so this cut off income is what is what defines creamy layer non creamy layer families that have income above the threshold level are called creamy layer yeah the ones below the threshold income would be non creamy layer so i belong to a family that is an example okay if i belong to a family whose threshold income is less than what the government says about 8 lakh rupees per annum if it's below 8 lakh rupees then i would be obc i have to be first identify i have to be identified as a backward class guy and then i know my family income has to be below the threshold income then i can avail the benefit of reservation okay sc is 15% scheduled caste 15% scheduled tribe 7.5% obc 27% okay for obc the threshold income is 8 lakh rupees earlier it was 6 and before that it was 4 and a half now it's 8 okay capital adequacy ratio for banks is fixed is fixed as per the norms of the basel community you could say basel also we discussed this in the previous session that uh, we mentioned that we will discuss this in this session so why don't you take a short note on this please yeah right um capital adequacy ratio what is it simple basic understanding see i am a kind of guy who likes to simplify things i would not use a language that you would not understand okay i i would want my teacher to use a language that i understand similarly the same goes for my students yeah so car capital adequacy ratio please write this first point reflects a bank's ability reflects a bank's ability bank's ability to pay pay by pay liabilities to pay liabilities and respond to pay liabilities and respond respond to credit and operational risks to credit and operational risks so does the bank have enough money to pay back its depositors who when they demand in large numbers and um, operational list like some policy issues um something to do with non performing assets money does not come in money lent does not come in large numbers 
large amounts so it could create a lot of problems for bank because it would then have to dig into its capital to repay its depositors and uh, you know whoever is demanding money but if it does not have enough capital then what would happen it would get you know it would go insolvent bankrupt and this is why it's called capital adequacy ratio okay next a bank with a good car car is capital adequacy ratio a bank with a good car has enough has enough capital has enough capital to absorb ab sorb absorb to absorb potential to absorb potential losses losses yes potential losses full stop thus 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 it has a lower chance lower risk or you could say it has less risk lss less risk of becoming bankrupt <laughs> bankrupt sometimes things go really bad hmm? it has less risk of becoming bankrupt and losing and losing depositors money depositors money depositors money so mm, get this now or you could write one more point under basel b a s e l basel under basel 3 let me write it here norms under basel 3 norms banks must keep banks must have banks must have car of capital adequacy ratio of at least 8% at least 8% at least 8% at least 8% okay at least 8% fair so this is how it is calculated there is tier 1 tier 2 weighted averages weighted risks you don't require right now okay once you have interview calls we'll take you there don't worry about this my dear okay we'll take care of all these things at the right time right now you need to know what is capital adequacy ratio and that we got okay see in basel you could say why basel what is basel it's a place in switzerland it is home to the bank you could write this bank for international settlements bank for international settlements bank for international settlements bank for international settlements okay bank for international settlements so that's about it my friends cool let's go past this The Ranthambore Na National Park is in Rajasthan. Oh, it's a beautiful place. Um, please visit it. Yeah. So, right, Ranthambore. Ranthambore. Underline that first one. Um, spread over. Spread over. Thirteen thirty-four square kilometers. Thirteen thirty-four. Thirteen thirty-four square kilometer. I like to write square kilometers like this. You could also write it like this. No harm. Hmm. No harm. S Q is fine, but I write like this. So next, declared a national park in nineteen fifty-five. Declared a national park in nineteen fifty-five.
you see this this is a water hole it's typically called a water hole but water hole is much a water hole is much smaller you know uh, what say uh, 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 you could say water bank okay but here this is this particular thing you see here it, this has a name padma talab padma talab or talab talab basically lake hmm it's quite famous for its tigers okay uh, what national parks would you find in these places uttarakhand uh corbett national park you could write this corbett national park in brackets you could write um uh, originally called haley national park originally called haley h a i l e y haley national park Haley National Park dash India's first national park India's first national park India's first national park I think it was 1936 uh, let me check again but it is 1936 it was 1936 next um, Madhya Pradesh oh plenty of them you could write Bandavgarh very famous one Bandavgarh hmm national park assam you could write um, since we are talking of tigers na not kajiranga write manas manas national park manas national park sikkim doesn't have a tiger reserve but we can write the name of kanchenjunga kanchenjunga national park hmm Okay, Kanchenjunga National Park. Okay, guys. What does T in IDRBT, which is in Hyderabad, stand for? Technology. So why don't you write uh, the full form of IDRBT? Then I'll give you some notes on um, what is it? Uh, uh, RBI owned or RBI owned institutes. Right, IDRBT. institute for institute for development and research development and research in banking technology in banking technology dash established 1996 established 1996 dash Hyderabad 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 now leave one line space right um RBI training institutes RBI training institutes just write this RBI training institutes underline that okay first point 3 r autonomous 3 r autonomous 3 r autonomous okay autonomous while another while another 3 while another 3 are part of the rbi while another 3 are part of the rbi leave one nice space right autonomous so what are the ones that are autonomous right one nibm national institute of banking technology banking management national institute of banking management national institute of banking management comma pune p u n e pune next idr bt what we just mentioned idr bt you already know the full form right above you would find it yeah idr bt hyderabad 
नेक्स्ट इंदिरा गांधी इंस्टीट्यूट इंदिरा गांधी इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर डेवलपमेंट रिसर्च फॉर डेवलपमेंट रिसर्च कॉमा मुंबई 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 सो वी गॉट ऑल थ्री आई मीन थ्री ऑटोनॉमस वंस नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ आरबीआई सबेडिंग पार्ट ऑफ आरबीआई पार्ट ऑफ आरबीआई अंडरलाइन दैट वन आरबीआई एकेडमी आरबीआई एकेडमी कमा मुंबई आरबीआई एकेडमी कमा मुंबई सेकेंड कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर बैंकिंग कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर बैंकिंग पुणे कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर बैंकिंग पुणे थर्ड वन इज आरबीआई स्टाफ कॉलेज आरबीआई स्टाफ कॉलेज आरबीआई स्टाफ कॉलेज चेन्नई चेन्नई आरबीआई स्टाफ कॉलेज चेन्नई ओके वी गॉट ऑल सिक्स सो दिस इज अ वे टू लर्न लिटिल अवेयरनेस नाउ दैट यू रिटर्न दिस ओवर लंच ओवर ब्रेकफास्ट डिनर स्नैक वेन एवर यू सिट डाउन टू ईट समथिंग जस्ट लुक इट अप वंस अच्छा ट्राई टू बिकम फेमिलियर यू डोंट हैव टू सी यू 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 वॉन्ट टू गो टू मुंबई so what institute would you find in mumbai is what you should think you will find the rbi academy yeah you will find the indira gandhi institute for development research so this is the way to learn you don't have to remember everything but you could add the unknown to the known and things would work well hmm it will take time but then nothing is achieved without patience and hard work okay The RBI commenced its operations on 1st April 1935 at Calcutta. That's where it was founded, my friends. Okay, you could write this simple sentence: RBI RBI. I'm sorry, guys. Um, commenced operations at Calcutta. At Calcutta. On first, on first April nineteen thirty five. Full stop. It moved to Mumbai. It moved to Bombay. You could call it. These are old names. You know when they started. It moved to Mumbai in nineteen thirty seven. In nineteen thirty seven. Full stop. It was. it operated it operated as a central bank as a central bank not central bank of but central bank for it operated as the central bank for pakistan pakistan till 1948 till 1948 till june 1948 till june 1948 and Myanmar or Burma, you could say Myanmar also, and Myanmar or Burma till 1947. Till 1947. I just wanted to give you some extra information. That's it. You know that I normally give extra information, so this is something. So we wrote that the RBI commenced its operations at Calcutta on the first of April 1935. Second, we mentioned that it moves its operations from Calcutta to. Uh, Mumbai in 1937. We also mentioned it continued to be um, the it it operated as the central bank for Pakistan till June 1948 and uh, central bank of um, central bank of uh, this is central bank of or central bank for Myanmar till 1947. Even though you know, should know that Myanmar had separated India from India in 1937 itself. Okay, so. That's about it, guys. Pretty good stuff. India has been ranked dash in the Global Cyber Security Index uh, 2020. We are tenth in cyber security. Uh, why don't you write this Global Cyber Security Index? 
global cyber security index that's the latest index 2020 21 has not come out so global cyber security index underline that top five ranks top five hmm? one us two uk hmm? three kingdom of saudi arabia kingdom of saudi arabia four estonia this estonia is in the baltic hmm? you find three countries latvia lithuania and estonia there hmm? and south korea which is in the korean in the southern part of the korean peninsula so this is the top five countries in the index 10th india you write 10th india um 33 china 33 china so they ranked about 182 countries of which india ranks 10th in the world okay good so which ministry has launched the nipun bharat program well what is nipun you write this ministry of education before we write in about these ministries the names of the ministers let's write nipun please write nipun bharat program underline that first one what is the full form of nipun national initiative national initiative for proficiency means competency for proficiency in in reading reading with understanding reading with understanding and numeracy numeracy nipunis national initiative for proficiency in reading let me write this also in reading with understanding and numeracy full stop see today most kids can't read well and it is true actually and the covid has made things worse yeah things are pretty bad out there see we may talk of online education you have access you are lucky to have access to education like this you know but um, think about see when i say lucky because you can afford you have the means to be able to afford this kind of online education but think about millions of school children who haven't who don't have access to such education so what's happened to them how many in the urban areas in just in urban areas would be able to access their online education very few yeah so think about urban areas think about rural areas now crores and crores of kids haven't had education decent access to education in the last one and a half years and we may talk about okay you know there is corona virus social distancing has to be there even while parents are moving and see parents don't want to send their children even they while they are move, attending marriages they are going on holidays in crowded places and all so somewhere you know while the child is losing out someone else is not really worried about losing out so um apart from covid generally at a general level also most kids don't you know are not proficient in reading and of course uh, understanding things because our system does not give weightage to understanding it gives weightage to rata fai mugging up basically you know learning things by heart which is poor that's why it says reading with understanding yeah next what's the aim aim is to ensure aim a i m aim is to ensure that every child every child attains foundational attain, attains foundational foundational literacy literacy being able to read literacy 
and numeracy by grade or class you could write whatever class 3 class 3 by 26 27 academic year okay let me take you through the ministries now um, I'm sure that most of you would appreciate the aim of the program yeah, it's going to make our kids um, our children the nation's children you yeah, know better Minister of Tribal Affairs, Arjun Munda. Arjun Munda. Munda is a tribe in Charkhand, Chhattisgarh, Western West Bengal, Southern Bihar. In Arjun Munda. Education Minister, we mentioned a while ago, Dharmendra Pradhan. Dharmendra Pradhan. Home Affairs, Amit Shah. Minister of Finance Nirmala Sitaraman Nirmala Sitaraman Nirmala Sitaraman Ministry of Science and Technology See earlier there was a Ministry of Union Ministry of the Cabinet Ministry of Science and Technology now it does not exist okay earlier uh, Dr. Harshavardhan was the minister now he's been removed and currently there is an MOS Minister of State Minister of State for Science and Technology, Dr. Jitendra Singh. Dr. Jitendra Singh. Dr. Jitendra Singh. Okay, guys. Dr. Jitendra Singh. Hmm. Which of the following has launched postpaid mini small ticket loans? Paytm. Paytm. Okay. See, these kinds of loans are. You want to. I'll give a certain terminology that would help you explain things. Hmm? Right. Paytm postpaid. Paytm postpaid. Paytm postpaid. Mini loans. Mini loans. You don't have to write the entire thing. Mini loans. Dash. A need based and consumption based. Consumption means expense in this case. Use based. Needs based and consumption based. Credit. Credit. Need based and consumption based credit for users for users to help them to help them manage their manage their household finances household finances household finances okay yeah so uh, think about it now guys uh, a lot of people what kind of loans are we discussing we are looking at you could write this loans range from loan size loan size or credit size range ranges from rupees 250 to 1000 ah 250 se 1000 rupees tak ka loan hota loan size ranges from rupees 250 to 1000 to clear to clear monthly ex bills monthly bills like electricity like electricity you have cable television karcha dth it's called direct to home so you have a lot of expenses like this hmm? So some people need small loans instead of taking huge loans or looking taking loans at exorbitant rates of interest. These are small ticket loans and these are given only to those people who whose credit score is okay. 
Yeah. Do you know of these choices? By the way, who owns Paytm? Paytm was founded by Vijay Shekhar Sharma. Vijay Shekhar Sharma. Vijay Shekhar Sharma. Vijay Shekhar Sharma. Hmm. Phone Pay is owned by Flipkart. Flipkart is owned by Walmart. So Wal Flip Walmart owns Phone Pay. Okay, Phone Pay, Flipkart. G Pay, Google Pay. Hey, do you know? Okay, let me just one last mention. Yeah, one last thing. Beam, you write this. Bharat interface. Bharat interface. Bharat interface for money for money. B H I M. B means it's named after Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Okay, Baba Sahib, Doctor Bhim Rao. Ramji Ambedkar. Aapka naam tha Bhim Rao. Okay. Bhim Rao Ramji. Sorry. Inke papa ka naam tha. Dad's name Ramji. And Ambedkar. He came from a place called Ambedwadkar. Ambedwad. 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 Uh, in Maharashtra, you know, uh, they always add Kar to denote the person has come from that place. So a guy coming from the village of Kharsundi becomes a Kharsundi Kar. Okay. That's all because I recently traveled to through that village and so I can tell you that in Maharashtra. Um, so while it was Ambedwad, Ambedwad, his teacher changed it to Ambed. Okay. And that's how Ambedkar. So Baba Sahib's first name was Bhimrao. Aapka naam tha Bhimrao. Papa's name Ramji Ambedkar. That is you know surname i always believe that uh, that bharat interface is named after me because i my name is bharat c jain and i thought it was named after me but then i'm just kidding <laughs> how why will it anything hey, why will anything be named after me yeah so learn these kinds of things they are interesting especially about baba sahib's early life the kind of discrimination he faced and all that you know after coming back from you know um Coming back from abroad, he suffered serious discrimination at the, you know, uh, when he went to work for the Maharaj of Baroda, where, you know, he, he tried to get a guest house, a place to stay in the initial days of being there, but no one would give him anything because he came from a lower caste, people like, that's what people like, you know, that's how this narration is actually. Yeah. Then a Parsi gives him, but Parsi says that um, in the guest house book, when you enter, don't enter your caste name or anything, basically. Yeah. Read the story. It will give you a lot of knowledge about the great man. Yeah. Hovinel Moise was Hovinel. Okay. Hovinel Moise, it's pronounced Hovinel. You could say Jovinel also. Moise was the president of Daesh at the time of his assassination recently. Haiti. This is Haiti. You see this? Yeah, this one. This portion is Haiti. This portion. This island of Dominica is uh, split into two parts. The eastern part is Dominican Republic and the western is uh, Haiti. Okay. The president was assassinated at his home. So there are a lot of allegations. I follow this particular part of the world in a very keen way. And um, Haiti is the most populous country in this part. Area wise, Cuba is the biggest. Okay. But Haiti population wise, Haiti is the most populous. Its population is about 11.42 million, which would make it 11 point, uh, you know, 1.14 crore. Not much actually, but the area. Hmm? Why don't you write Haiti? Haiti, capital. You can see, look up the map also. Port au Prince. Port au Prince. Hyphenated. 
the current acting president acting prime minister is the same fellow ariel henry both the president and the prime minister acting is ariel henry and the currency here is called gourd it's one of the most poorest countries in the world in fact in the entire western hemisphere west of 0 degrees greenwich you know uh, 0 degrees longitude you can say longitude or longitude i say longitude west of 0 degrees longitude this is the poorest country haiti oh, pretty bad so that's gourd my friend g o u r d e okay gourd that's a currency and what what else should you know we know about um, why don't we just take the capitals of these places not everything cuba we discussed in the previous class so i'll not repeat um jamaica kingston that's a capital yeah you see this jamaica kingston is a capital okay since the capitals are mentioned here i'll give you more information um see this is a country that is that accepts the british monarch as the head of its own country the british monarch currently the queen elizabeth queen elizabeth the second is the head of um, um jamaica okay so if you would look at um, the prime minister it is andrew holness andrew holness andrew holness that's the president hmm and jamaican dollar is a currency that's a prime minister andrew holness is the prime minister and um, you know its currency is the jamaican dollar jamaican dollar why don't we look at choices like um, puerto rico puerto rico you want to know this is puerto rico this is part of the united states you know that this is directly part of the united states puerto rican citizens are effectively citizens of united states in fact they are called U us citizens they have all the rights as us citizens except voting rights they cannot vote for the president and the vice president yes but they can move freely between the us and puerto rico yeah so that's puerto rico you don't require information but except okay i'll make baat bol deta hu san juan is the capital san juan or san juan j is pronounced h okay or guatemala guatemala's capital is guatemala city it's here this is guatemala okay this is guatemala there's a capital uh, it's um, its president is alex alexandro yeah alexandro giamatti okay g i a m m e t t i giamatti alessandro giamatti and the currency is also the name of a bird you know what is that quetzal quetzal is a bird it looks like a macaw very colorful bird enough ya chaliye which three nations have announced a new sorry guys have announced a new trilateral indo pacific alliance named aukus a for australia uk for united kingdom us for united states aukus that's how the name comes okay um you could write this aukus dash australia uk and us dash aims to um you could write collective military security pact military security pact military security pact dash aims to provide aims to provide a i m s aims to provide nuclear powered nuclear powered submarines with technology transfer with technology transfer by the us to australia by the us to australia
you know so ah i want to tell you something here australia is deeply worried about the expansionist designs of china there china my friends claims the whole of south china sea this is south china sea china says this entire region is ours sorry this is all ours technically the a country's boundaries extend 12 nautical miles the 18 kilometers from the coast into the sea that's a boundary national international boundary okay international boundary exclusive economic zone extends to about 200 nautical miles from the coast but china says that entire area is ours okay this is also called the nine dash line nine dashes kind of thing now by claiming international waters as its own territory china is violating international law the countries here brunei philippines vietnam cambodia you know um, you have uh, malaysia indonesia they all they already launched protests with china saying that look you are impinging on our national sovereignty by china says get off it's ours no discussions on this and they are already threatening those countries um, those that are retaliating or that are standing up against china for long australia had been at largest you know china has been the largest trade partner of australia and that made china that made china big you know gave china a big voice in australian domestic politics they began to influence through university stuff and all that stuff university um, professors university research and everything on university campuses you would find a lot of chinese students who would always make sure that the chinese government's um, voice is heard you know um, then australia tightened its belt and said that um, you know we are going to stop this uh, you know uh, propaganda machines of chinese government and australia is also worried about the military advances aggression aggressive nature of china today china is here what will stop it from coming here pretty little it's already you know its submarines are already there everywhere in this entire region so guys australia had a pact with france in 2017 it was signed um for transfer of 12 submarines diesel electric submarines the contract was worth 27 billion dollars 12 submarines 27 billion dollars contract but diesel submarine diesel electric submarines are not fast and in they stand no chance against a nuclear powered six nuclear powered submarines of China China has five nuclear powered sub- submarines they are building more so they cancelled the contract with France which angered France of course and then America said guys Australians hey we will give you the t- technology till date we have transferred the technology to you know Britain only but you will be our exclusive partner in you know without stating in our aim to contain the spread of China so nuclear powered submarines could last it could be under water for months on end yeah and they travel much faster much much faster than diesel electric submarines so by 2030 within the first submarines uh, nuclear powered submarines will be built either by australia or united states but they with the transfer the technology will come from the us and that's a very big thing my friends yeah us has highly advanced technology in this case not that other countries don't have but australia will become only the sixth country seventh country to have nuclear submarines nuclear powered submarines what countries have nuclear powered submarines the five permanent members of the un security council five permanent members of the un security council have nuclear powered submarines plus india plus india now 
ऑस्ट्रेलिया ओके सो देर लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स एंड दिस इज एन एरिया आई डीपली लव माई फर्स्ट लव इज फॉरन अफेयर्स एस्पेशली वॉर्स कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑल दैट स्टाफ आई ट्राई टू ब्रिंग इन ए लिटिल डिस्कस दिस इन एनी केस चलिए australia prime minister is scott morrison scott morrison australian prime minister is scott morrison theek hai and of right now the union cabinet has recently allowed dash foreign direct investment in the telecom sector via the automatic route 100% see there is something called the automatic route and there is something called the you know government approval the route through government approval now earlier it was 74% automatic earlier it was 74% automatic in the telecom sector that is if a country if a company wishes to invest in the telecom sector in a, you know up to 74% no government approval is required but beyond 74% government approval was necessary now the government says you know 100% automatic route is enough. no government permission is required no government approval is required now so it's become like a few other sectors like cash and carry sectors like wholesale trading single brand retail yeah they all have become 100% basically so it's a pretty good one actually because recently the government came up with a lot of reforms in the tel- lot of policy moves in the telecom sector concerning the suspension of payment of agr yeah annual gross uh, revenues um, plus um, you know license fee and all that stuff so maybe in some other session i will discuss this but please read up all these things my friends it's good to read spend 10 15 minutes see pick any topic of your choice maybe telecom sector start to read tell yourself before you start to read start to re- learn you tell yourself two things one that i may not understand everything and two that i may not remember everything start to read some parts you understand some you don't get no problem you know 10 15 minutes you spend end of which you will realize that while you might not be you know you might not have understood everything and you might not be able to recall everything you still would have had some basic idea 15 minutes will, will give you some basic idea that's how we learn Okay, it takes a long time normally to become an expert, but you will eventually get there if you put in consistent effort. Hmm? The International Day for Preservation of Ozone Layer is observed on 16 September every year. In this context, which of the following statements is are true? The theme for this year's uh, this year is uh, Montreal Protocol, uh, keeping us our food and vaccines cool. Oh, the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. was signed in 1987 true the kigali amendment to the montreal protocol aims to face down of um, aims for the face down of hfcs which is which are hydro fluoro carbons hydro fluoro carbons okay the kigali amendment to the amend uh, Montreal Protocol aims for the phase down of HFCs by cutting down their production. Um, see, HFCs are known to be contributing to climate change. Okay, as they contribute to climate change, their production needs to be brought down. Their impact so that their impact on the on on the climate could be could also be minimized. The negative impact could be minimized. That's the idea. You know, it's Kigali. Kigali is the capital of Rwanda. R W A N D A. Rwanda. Kigali is the capital of Rwanda. And if you want to know when it was it signed, Kigali Amendment was signed in 2016. 2016. Kigali Amendment signed in 2016. You know where is Montreal? Montreal is in Canada. Montreal is in Canada. The Olympics happened here in 1976. Montreal Olympics 1976. Hmm. I think fair. Just to okay, I guess that should be fine. 
Whom of the following Indian chess players have recently won the Norway Open Masters 2021? Well, Gukesh, Dhammaraju Gukesh. Not much of a question in terms of a lot of information, but I can give you one particular point. Dhammaraju Gukesh, you could write this. Dhammaraju Gukesh won the tournament, but okay. Um, youngest Indian Grandmaster. Youngest Indian Grandmaster. Youngest Indian Grandmaster. And third worldwide. And third worldwide. Third worldwide. Third world war. Worldwide. Yeah. Chica, I guess. You know where is Norway? Norway is in North Europe. Norway is a country that's a part of Scandinavia, the region of Scandinavia. You know what are four? What are the four countries in Scandinavia? Um, Norway, Denmark, Finland, and Sweden. These four countries make Scandinavia. Okay, guys. Norway, Denmark, Finland, and Sweden. Hmm. The President of India, Ramnath Kovin, virtually conferred the 2020 National for Lawrence Nightingale Awards to 51 recipients. This award is conferred on nurses and midwives. Just write a sentence about this. Right. National Florence Nightingale Awards Dash started in 1973. No grammar. Started 1973. Started 1973. Dash to recognize to recognize meritorious service. Meritorious service. Meritorious services. Of nurses and midwives midwives are those who help in childbirth okay do you know who's the health minister of india you could write mansuk mansuk mandavia he heads two major oh i'm so sorry yeah. Where is the end Mansuk? Yeah, Mansuk, Mandavia, heads two major ministries. One is health and family welfare. Health and family welfare. And the second one is chemicals and fertilizers. No relationship, but that's how it is. Chemicals and fertilizers. Chemicals and fertilizers. So health and family welfare and chemicals and fertilizers. Next. According to the UNCTA Trade and Development Report 2021, the Indian economy could grow a dash in 2021. You know what is UNCTA? Please write UNCTA. United Nations. United Nations. Conference on Trade and Development. United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Hmm. Trade and Development. Right. Next point. Established 1964. Established 1964. Next. UN Specialized Agency. UN Specialized Agency. UN Specialist Agency. Next. Um, head Office, Head Office, Geneva, Switzerland. Geneva, Switzerland. Next. 
secretary general i think that's the position secretary general rebecca rebecca greenspan of the country of costa rica central america costa rica central america next uh so bangta trade report i went through the report i love the you know i i always quote these reports and i because i love them so the report says that the economic growth is happening but it's quite uneven it's uneven along income lines so the rich are becoming richer and the poor are becoming poorer or the poor are remaining poor if not becoming poorer the rich are becoming richer so the in income gap is widening so there is uh, what we say uneven recovery along income lines along sector lines and along uh, what we say um, uh, what we say regional lines so some parts of the world are being, are becoming normal again okay they're going growing much faster than other parts of the world so region wise also there is a discrepancy there is a, a difference in terms of growth and when it comes to sectors certain sectors are growing faster than others like tourism sector is not picking up airlines industries airline sector is not picking up contact intensive sectors are not picking up hospitality industry hotel industry and all that they're not picking up yeah so you read these kinds of things they make you feel good i mean you get a lot of knowledge insight into the way the world is working the risks involved in all that so um this is for 2021 and um, 6.7% in 2022 let's say see these are all projections no one knows what might happen okay yeah global growth if you want to write global growth uh, the report says global growth this year will be 5.3% 5.3% that is because the base last year was low yeah over that 5% 5.3% is a very looks like a, oh my god kind of thing so in 5.3% in 2021 and 3.6% in 22 that's a global economic growth or gdp growth theek hai according to euro money which bank was honored with the world's best bank and world's best digital bank um, for 2021 dbs the development bank of singapore the development bank of singapore singapore can write singapore and its um, ceo is piyush gupta piyush gupta piyush gupta hmm barclays bank Barclays Bank is one of the world's biggest banks, and this is headquartered in London. You know, it is the bank that came up with the first ATM. Okay, and its CEO is a guy called Jess Staley. Jess Staley. Jess Staley, CEO of Barclays Bank. Deutsche Bank, pronounced Deutsche. What is it? Deutsche or Deutsche, don't say douche. I because that's how I used to pronounce before I get to I got to know it's Deutsche, you know, which is German. Okay, Deutsche Bank. Um, it's headquartered in Frankfurt. Frankfurt, as you know, is the cap financial capital of Germany, and its CEO is Christian. Suing, Christian Suing, Christian Suing. Okay, next. Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. I was reading uh, stuff on this, and this is the world's biggest bank. World's biggest bank. Okay. This is headquartered in Beijing. ICBC is headquartered in Beijing, and its CEO is Gu Shu. 
Gushu, headquartered Beijing, CEO Gu Shu. See, you occasionally would find me speaking like head, you know, established 1973, headquarters Beijing. I don't use grammar, especially when we are talking of descriptive and non-descriptive test. Um, we are talking of facts, MCQ kind of test. Established in, you know, it's established in. You know, the headquarters are in. Or at you could both you could use both, so I don't use normally that kind of language. Okay, Gu Shu is the CEO. DNP um, Paribas. This is um, Bank National de Paris, and this is Europe's biggest bank. Europe's biggest bank is headquartered in Paris, and CEO is John Laurent Bonafi. John Laurent Bonaf. Okay. The Collective Security Treaty Organization will hold military drills in Tajikistan in October 2021 amid, amid the deteriorating situation in the security situation in Afghanistan. Apart from Russia and Tajikistan, name the other members of this group. Well, all of them are there. Um, see. Just write this. This is something that we have never discussed. So why don't you write Collective Security Treaty Organization, CSTO. Hmm? CSTO. Right. Um, underline that first point. Established in 1992. Established in 1992. But given the current name and membership given the current name and form name and form if are in form in ten years later 2012 2002 sorry 10 years later 2002 established in 1992 but given the current name and form in 2002 next um, head office Moscow Head office Moscow. Next, Secretary General. Secretary General of Stanislav Jazz. Secretary General Stanislav Jazz of Belarus. This is Belarus. You can see this Belarus. Okay. Next, six members. Six members. You can write the names: Russia, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, hmm? Belarus. They already mentioned. Now, guys, the membership is restricted to former members of former states of the USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Between 1922 and 1991, the USSR existed as a superpower. It was a country that existed between 1922 and 1991. In 1991, it broke up. And all the 15 provinces in this country became 15 separate countries. So these 15 countries, like, you know, I'll just take you through, you know, you have, um, where is it, where is it? This is Russia, one, two, Kazakhstan, Three Uzbekistan, four Kyrgyzstan, five Tajikistan, six, you know, um, what is it? Um, Turkmenistan. Then we have Azerbaijan. Then we have um, Armenia. Then we have Georgia. Nine. Then we have sorry guys, ten Ukraine, eleven Belarus. Then we have a place here called yeah, just southwest of uh, Ukraine, a place called Moldova. Twelve. Up here will be three places, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. So three plus two and 15 there, 15 countries. Yeah. So the membership is restricted. A new one for us. Which bank will provide project specific loans to the Assam government for upgrading micro, small and medium enterprises clusters in the state? SIDBI, Small Industries Development Bank of India, headquartered Lucknow, headquartered at Lucknow. So you could write SIDBI, 
small industries development bank of india small industries development bank of india headquarters lucknow headquarters sorry guys headquarters lucknow um and its um, chairman is siva subramanyam raman siva subramanyam raman siva subramanyam raman okay i think bandhan bank it has a very big network uh, in west bengal and uh, assam bandhan bank ceo is chandra shekhar ghosh chandra shekhar ghosh hmm chandra shekhar ghosh then i think we know all these things rakesh sharma adbi bank rakesh sharma yes bank prashant kumar prashant kumar okay then we have the next question which company made history by launching the inspiration 4 mission with the world's first all civilian crew into space spacex spacex is uh, headquarter you know headquartered not on you don't require that anyway and the ceo is what's his name um elon musk elon musk is also the ceo of tesla space x is space exploration that's the company's name okay this is um headed by richard branson so if they ask you who is associated these are all billionaires okay richard branson virgin galactic blue origin jeff bezos jeff bezos next whom the following indians have been listed on time magazine's list of 100 most influential people all of them uh, mamta banerjee as you know is a cm of uh, west bengal uh, prime minister narendra modi uh, of um, other punawala ceo of serum institute of india serum institute of india okay the world's biggest vaccine maker the world's biggest contract vaccine maker which international institution has recently announced that it would discontinue the practice of issuing the doing business report after review of irregularities in data see all data is manipulative can is subject to manipulation by vested interests so these kinds of things are always very what we say um, uh, subject there is rarely any objectivity in these kinds of reports yeah if you look at press freedom you will always find india's press freedom at the bottom india's rank is almost at the bottom because you will find that these things are written by you know um, these rip- most of these are you know uh, most of the reports are mentioned by those organizations that are generally been anti india okay so it's nothing new for them is going central european central bank See, I'm not talking about political guy like you know BJP, Congress. No, no, I'm saying they are generally the Economist, BBC. They are generally anti-India. By nature, they are anti-India. New York Times. They are generally anti the Prime Minister, current BJP, and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm not a political guy, but you should think a little about why they say what they say. There is an agenda on this. Hmm. So European Central Bank is headquartered in F- Frankfurt. Okay, let us not discuss this. Anyway, since I mentioned Frankfurt, and it is um, headed by Christine Lagarde, Christine Lagarde. She is the ex um, finance minister of France and an ex um, what we say um, managing director and managing director of the International Monetary Fund. Christine Lagarde. I think we discussed this in the last class. Just. Marcos Trajo is Marcos Trajo of Brazil. Marcos Trajo of Brazil is the president of the New Development Bank. 
International Monetary Fund, you know the, G, the CEO or MD is called Kristalina Georgieva. Kristalina Georgieva. Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, headquartered in Shanghai, Jin Likan of China. Of China. If you don't know where is Kristalina Georgieva from, I think we discussed this in the previous session. She is from Bulgaria. She is from Bulgaria, France, Brazil, okay, China. Which institution plans to convene the world's foremost leaders for the annual meeting 2022 in Davos Clusters, Switzerland? The World Economic Forum, you could write this. World Economic Forum, established 1971. Established 1971. Uh, founder, founder and chairman, still the chairman. He is founder chairman, Klaus Schwab. Kla Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab, Head Office of World Economic Forum, Colony, Switzerland, Colony, it's called Colony, Switzerland. Last point, annual meetings, annual meetings at Davos, D-A-V-O-S, Davos. They usually happen in January. The world's who's who, I mean, of business, policy making, government, they all come down, sit, discuss things and all that. It's an idea platform, that's it. nothing more. We already know about the IMF. Uh, we discussed IMF and World Bank in the previous class, Tuesday and Wednesday class. Why don't we look at food and agriculture organization? Rome, headquartered at Rome, and it's headed by a Chinese name Ku Dongyu. Ku Dongyu. Ku Dongyu. Okay. So, UN Security Council has 15 members and um, 5 permanent members and 10 non permanent members. Currently, India is a non permanent member. I mean, one of the 10 non-permanent members. And coming to the five permanent members, you have the US, Britain, France, um, Russia, and China. Okay, that's about it from here. And then, then thank you, my friends. Thanks for being here. Have a lot of fun. Make sure you stay curious this weekend and beyond that. Thank you for being here once again. Thank you.